Hello and welcome to the Tech Lunch Podcast, where we encourage our listeners to learn something new about tech every week. This can range from learning about new and exciting tech applications to the advancements in coding and technology. If you are always learning, you will always be a step above the rest. Take the time during lunch or during a break to listen and learn, kind of like a lunch and learn, but for the years. This podcast will open the listeners' ears to new and exciting technologies they may have not been purviewed to in the past. These topics will range from manufacturing technologies to data collection technologies and everything in between. Hello all, I'm Nick. Hey, I'm John. And, you know, this week we're missing Ed. Um, you know, hopefully he'll we'll, we'll come back to the the group here eventually. We'll I know he <laughs> was talking about moving and the grandkids were here and stuff like that. So, you know, we can wish that he had a good visit and, you know, had some good family time. So, you know, the one thing that, you know, we talked about last week, we really started getting into data-driven ergonomics, mm -hmm. you know, of how we can build ergonomics using data. And, you know, this week, we're going to go for, I guess you could say the final episode of the ergonomics series. If you want us to do more, let us know, um, where we're going to talk about the bleeding edge of ergonomics. I, you know, it's, you know, what are the advancements? How are we getting there? What type of software and hardware are used in that type of environment? And, you know, kind of like how you can make them. Because the funny thing is, is a 3D printer in me thinks that you can build a lot of this stuff with a 3D printer if you got, if you got, if you got, hang, if you got hungry enough to try it. Yeah. And uh, if you really want to invest in some serious hardware. There's just so much you can do with a printer, period. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard not to apply it to whatever project is is you know in front of you, um, and if you're not, I think that you're being a little narrow minded because iteration one is probably not your best work. Yeah, I found that up there. Yeah, iteration twelve might be the perfect one. Yeah, iteration two might be the perfect one, but you won't know if you're not you know rapidly trying to build those or change those little things to make it perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I think, yeah, w when we talk data-driven ergonomics, we kind of touched on, um, you know, the why, uh, what data is being used for, who it's being used for, mm -hmm. what it is, what it's being um, kind of used to upgrade or advance, make efficient and whatnot. And I, and I think that that's, that's part of the, the kind of essence of, you know, ergonomics. Of course, you're, you're, you're talking about the blend between, you know, engineering and um, you know, production. Right? Yeah, you're working work, work that line. Yeah. And and because you want it to, you want to produce the most, but you also want to be holistic and and care for your person that's actually doing the work. So right. it's it's a nice blend. It's a nice little median point. Um, it also kind of, I think we we were a bit um, a bit narrow minded as well because we were talking very physical. Yeah. Very physical. Um, you know improvements and things uh, which that. which by the way is fantastic i mean most of the things we're talking about tedious tedious work like it's you yeah. know, you're lifting uh, constantly over and over but um kind of an idea that uh, a lot of uh a lot of places like i mean universities like uh, berkeley are looking at mm -hmm. um kind of what is what does the future look like kind of apply some of these um like the bleeding edge tech, like like AI, yeah, um, sensory sense. computer, like uh, 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 um, using sensors with your computer, so that it, uh, artificial intelligence, yeah. as far as machine learning, that's what yeah. I mean. Um, but it, it, it's going to upgrade so many things because we can also think about ergonomics and using data driven ergonomics mm -hmm. in a sense that it, you see, someone's done a process so many times, and maybe it's not labor intensive, but <clears throat> I would even say. And, and correct me if you disagree, because I think this is crazy. Like, going around and, like, let's say uh, someone's restarting every PC or having someone that wrote a script to restart all the PCs so you don't have to walk around. Yeah. Would you consider that more like a mental ergonomics or like a like a strategy? Um, I, I think it's more of a strategy type yeah. of thing. Yeah, and it is an ergonomics thing. It's been all what the height of those PCs are. Right. And stuff like that. And, you know, it eventually you, helps you. Right. <laughs> so. And if you think about it, if you start getting into, like, your your um, machine learning algorithms and stuff like that. You see people talking about Chat, chat GPT. That's the biggest one that we've got right now. 
it's exploding. You know, and that's the a, that's AI. That's not even machine learning. That's AI. Um, but the thing is, is everything is a data point. Yes. You know, it's like you get these guys out there that they can call somebody in and we'll track the movements of your employees for a little bit, turn that all into data points, <clears throat> map your facility, and okay. boom. Now they have a AI-driven floor plan that now tells you where to put things to reduce the amount of walking space you need. Yeah. That and, is beautiful. Right. You know, it's, it's, it, instead of, you know, three steps, it's just a one step and a lean over. It's crazy. Or they're now at shoulder height. Yeah, we, we use Containers this are shoulder height. So often, the GPS. Right. Like, we, it gets us shortest route there. Right. <laughs> and it's like, the one thing is, it's like, and also, you know, AI and machine learning, stuff like that, will we also tell that. you that, you know, probably will almost tell you, that most of your picking, like if you're doing line side picking parts and stuff like that for assemblies, they should never be below the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. It should be sense. the shoulder or above. You know, right. so it's easy to reach. Yeah. Nothing should be down low because that's that's indicating that you're having to lean at the waist to reach for it. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, is you're going to take the the token majority of being five feet. The five foot mark is probably going to be the shoulder level yeah. of most individuals, unless you're like the guy who's unless you're like that person who's four foot two. Then five foot is kind of a reach. Half my family. We get you a step stool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this station can only be worked by people five foot and under. <laughs> we'll, we'll build a platform. You know, <laughs> yeah, that might end up in a lawsuit. Yeah, no. no. Um, what do you have? Some of these midgets? No, um, no, we are we are helping. We're we're making it. You know, worker friendly. Yeah. Better for everyone. The only problem is a six foot two person cannot be walking on that platform. They're terrible. No, nah, he's gonna have to be sitting cross legged. <laughs> just on a, on a platform, yeah, right. moving platform. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's just that type of stuff. You know, it's stuff that your your AI and your machine learning, you throw all that into a bucket. Yeah, you can you and really, let it do its job. You really can use because and like you you get down to the like. The AI and the the auto recognition for you know uh, sorting even yeah. um, it's it's something that like you you don't need this worker to sort your packages anymore. The AI will scan the code and recognize or you know what I'm saying um, separate out heavier, smaller sized mm-hmm. boxes, and then the worker doesn't have to deal with the fifty pound ones now. So they're only dealing with the Ten and under. Yeah, I think FedEx does something like that. Whether yeah. uh, if you ever watched their series on like YouTube and stuff like that, where they're talking about their major sort facilities before they go yeah. on board aircraft. Um, sorry, UPS, maybe not FedEx. Um, but I they mean, kick they them out. All ba- use it. <laughs> yeah, they, they kick them all out based on location. Yeah, and they'll go into the boxes and then load on the airplane. And pff, off That's actually great too. Yeah, because it makes it your your trip straight there. Right. And you know what box you're pulling off? They're all yeah. marked. You load it back into the system, and then it takes them out of that out of the crate. And sends it back through the system to sort the, the final destinations, the last one mile stuff. Yeah, and and I bet you most of that stuff is. I mean, yeah, it's probably monitored by by an infrastructure team or oh, yeah. or a team of um, you know what I'm saying IT. But at the end of the day, a lot of that probably is automatic and automated. Yep. Think about it. You got preventive maintenance going on in there. You've yeah. got that type of stuff in there. You don't really have a whole lot of humans in the environment, you know, because they may not need to be in the environment unless yeah. it's maintenance technicians. You know, everybody else is your sorters and make sure your your package devices, your package containers are loaded um, yeah. and stuff like that. And that's also where we get to the point that we were talking about last time with the fact that these guys should be wearing sensors that tell you if somebody's had too much strain injury and too much bend over, you know, amounts. You know, but then again, everything should be coming at chest level. Yeah. Chest to shoulder level is pretty much yeah. where you should be. Yeah, it's 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 something that, I mean, ergonomics, it's... it's a, a, very useful for all of your labor force, but it doesn't necessarily have to uh, only be for those lifters and movers. It could be for right. those people organizing those things. And, and and you know what I'm saying? Like, we talk about sitting at a desk a lot. It, it'll help with those things too. But, like, you sit in a lot of different, like, kind of environments. You don't sit just in an office. Mm-hmm. Like, you'll be sitting in, in like, a dozer or a crane. Um Maybe, maybe it's like we think about the truck driver, mm-hmm. right? They're not lifting anything really, but if they're sitting for so long, we need data-driven ergonomics, or we need to use some type of AI that kind of records or takes those sensors into account and and says, "Hey, 
maybe we don't need to drive these have these truck drivers driving eight hours straight. Maybe we should split them up and 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 do four hours here, four hours there, and right. do little smaller loads. Which I'm as, like I'm assuming there's a lot of people that because truck drivers a lot of them have to have a home. Yeah, I'm assuming there's shorter trails. There's yeah, shorter, there's some guys who like day paths, drive. They day, yeah, you know, stuff like that. Anyways, but I bet you that came um, that came out of like necessity. Yeah, necessity and looking at like hey. We're even sitting down in one place, not really moving for eight to twelve hours, is is not good for you. Yeah, and that's also where the air ride seats came out of. Yeah, which honestly are really comfortable. Yeah. Um, so you is know, that is that like on a spring? It's on an air. It's on like on an air shock. Oh, so I like that. and most of the time the cabs are on air shocks. And Trying to get like one that. for your car? I wish. <laughs> I wish some of those long drives back home, man. Freaking, you know, your back won't be killing you. Yeah. But, you know, it's just one of those things. You know, it's it's also, it's kind of funny when you start talking about, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, different jobs and stuff like that, dealing with different type of, you know, AI or ergonomic-based, you know, advancements. Mm -hmm. For example, if you got, like, bulk sorters, so, like, the guys who are, yeah. who are dealing with sorting the right amount of bolts and nuts and stuff like that to go into containers that to be used on the line or whatnot. If you're talking about in a manufacturing facility or, you know, this or that, you know, you know the base weight. Yeah. So, I can take that weight... So the amount that I need into one container after zeroing eyes out the freaking container, mm -hmm. and then that's a repetitive process. I can calibrate my machine to dump exactly that amount. If you're using a machine fed, you can just calibrate the machine to dump that just amount, and you take a human out of the process. The only, the only thing a human has to do is verify. Quality verify, hit the button. Verify, hit the button. They're not having to di di scoop and dump, scoop and dump, and pray you're right. Mm. You know, you have an exact part count every single time. Yeah. You know, so not even just helps that. Also helps with like your logistics management and stuff like that. I think that's a huge piece, the logistics management. I mean, supply chain. We've talked about it yeah. here before. Is 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 so vital. Mm -hmm. And if you're not paying attention to how to make that more efficient, then you're not only paying for more work by workers, you're also paying for less because mm -hmm. there's you can't do but so much when you're relying on just purely you know, a human to, to like, you know, muscle their way through something. Right. That you need, you need some computer assisted, um, anything really yeah. hydraulic, like lifts or something. But if it's, if it's computer assisted logistics, like I think that there's, that's gotta be a way to, to kind of make that better for you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like CAD, but with more of a purpose. Yeah. Um, you know, but the thing is, is but that kind of brings us now to, I think probably the part where people were probably the most excited, people are kind of the most excited things to start talking about is, you know, how do we use the ergonomics to help people, not just in the workspace, but at home. Mm. You start dealing with, like, the stand-up wheelchairs. Yeah. You start dealing with the fact that the now... prosthetics. Yeah, the stand-up prosthetics. Like, we have... Um, uh, you know, service members who were, you know, injured in a line of duty between Iraq and Afghanistan and or, you know, Vietnam or places like that, that are now able to walk again for a little bit of time because of a exoskeleton type system that was placed on them, you know, that they locked themselves into so they can get up and, you know, do what they do best. Yeah. You know, they may not be for long, but they're up. They're moving. Their time is always valuable. You know, and they're they're enjoying everything they got going on. You know, they don't feel like they're they're different, which they should never feel that way. You know, I'm, I'm a vet myself, and that's just something that, you know, we, we kind of take to heart is, you know, take care of the ones that have, you know, gotten hurt or and take care of the families who've paid, the, you know, that their loved ones have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Um, You know, shout out to all the, you know, the Gold Star families out there and, you know, the guys who, you know, need our help. If you need anything, you let us know. And, you know, even if it's a 3D printer or something like that, you let us know, we'll help you out. Mm-hmm. So, but the thing is, with that, we kind of, you know, go to the fact that the exoskeletons are going to be the wave of the future, I think. <clears throat> I think it was, what, DARPA that's been looking into them the most now? Oh, I mean, there's... At there's, least for combat use, but also, yeah. I know we had some we saw, it was like the sitting chair in, like, Japan. I was going to say, like, it depends, I think it depends on the, the level of usage. I think there's no doubt in my mind that of course i mean tech when it comes out a lot of a lot of people sadly as it is it gets weaponized and and yeah they're going to increase that strength and try to use it as a military sense but i think that 
more usefulness like what you said with the the sitting the chair it's it's just something that clips onto your waist and it holds you in such a way that when you lean back you're you're you get the sensation of sitting and you loosen the wear and tear on your body yeah. instead of like if you're standing for the bus you're sitting you're sitting waiting for the bus if there's no sa- chairs something like that that's that's something that like is is Honestly, in my eyes, it's very minimal. Which is it, great for elderly people. And, and, and exactly, it's great for those or that those are, are handicapped. You know, having any any mobility issues. Right. So there's there's also things that are if you don't have any mobility issues, it's an enhancement now. Right. So you can you can run faster, run further because it's a, a, assisting you. I mean, we talked about mm-hmm. it a, a few weeks ago with 3D printing the the Adidas shoes, the 40 yeah. Ford. The way that they engineered them is it's. When you step down, it's pushing you forward. It's 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 the same way with with like maybe an exoskeleton, right? You know, gripping you at the waist, which is your your center mass, right? Mm-hmm. And and it's just kind of pulling you forward or pushing you forward, helping you forward. Help you lift heavier weights and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, don't don't try to push your push your limit too far because the the reason you got it is because it's pushing your limit. But you try to find the limit of that, you might hurt yourself. But yeah. it's you know, and most of the time those you. are those are done by you know compressed air or an onboard air generator Hydraulics, system or something yeah, hydraulic cool. or you know air over hydraulic or anything. Mm-hmm. You know, but the thing is, is they're definitely not quiet. Um, yeah, you'll never creep up on somebody and you're, <laughs> you know, hey, we hear you coming there, Bob. You know, and you yeah. you know that <laughs> you you know that that's happening. They're working on it. <laughs> yeah, they're working on sounds and it down a little bit, I guess. But you know, it's just you know we kind of know when you're creeping up on somebody. You know, but. The thing is, is with that, exoskeletons, I think, are, you know, going to be the wave of the future for the workforce. Or just, you know, how we handle other options. Like, why can't, now, instead of giving you crutches, why can't I give you an exoskeleton that will take the weight off your leg? Mm-hmm. It'll do it for you, you know, or... Increase your carrying weight, like... Right. You know, instead of putting you in a wheelchair, I'm going to put you into something that's assisted to help you walk. You know, support your back. So you can still maintain a normal mobility... No normal life of mobility. Yeah. I'm not saying turn every human being out there an Iron Man. I mean, I'm, I'm, that'd be cool though. But I'm not gonna lie to you. They probably can. But then again, I get kind of a joy at weaponizing things, so I guess that might be something. They probably can. Because, like, <laughs> if, you, if you've looked at the like where they have the the quote unquote jet packs, or yeah. you know what I'm saying, hover packs or whatever they yeah. put on your back and they just shoot water out. Like, I'm just saying, most of that got started by a dude who got bored with a leaf blower. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you could use your leaf blower as, a, as, as like, a boat engine. Now you could, like, I mean, it works. You could use a weed eater as... Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, it all started something. out with some dude who hooked a hose up to the back of a jet ski, oh. you know, and propelled himself up on a surfboard, you know, yeah. looking thing. You know, and then that kind of spun out of control where you wear the jet ski, you know, but... Well, yeah, as you move faster... You come to a stop faster. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's it's, it's not it's That's not the, it's not the you. trip that gets you. It's a sudden stop at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, if some of y'all are wanting to try some it's certain the deceleration. things. Deceleration. <laughs> just you know, watch out for the the when the G's go negative. Yeah, you're, 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 you're gonna hurt a little bit. <laughs> you know, it might sting. Um, <laughs> and also, what we found the other day is don't be the first person to try the latest bungee jump location because that never ends well. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Okay. Even though you got some ergonomics in that, you know, you where, where they tie the band and stuff like that. The only problem is, is the ground at the bottom. If something fails, really doesn't feel that well. You couldn't pay me to do that. <laughs> you couldn't pay. And me we can't to kick you off a bridge and see if you bounce back up. No, you'd have. I, I'd be fighting you the whole way. <laughs> you'd be coming down with me, and I'd be like, "This is this is what you get. <laughs> you did this to yourself." No, but but at the end of the day, yeah, the, the like we we get a little off topic, but the the exoskeleton. I mean, it's yeah, it's to me. Uh, you hit the bottom of a ravine, you're gonna need one. It's gonna be well, yeah. I mean, it's gonna be hard <laughs> for me, like, to see that we don't in the next decade use this as some sort of commercial capacity. Yeah. Um, as well as some sort of industrial or even military. Yeah. Capacity. And I, I, I see before we, you know, militarize it. I think it might be good to say, you know, that we are using some of these this exoskeleton, you know, phenomenon, you know, on the latest um, uh, Artemis spacesuits. You know, the moonwalk suits. Oh, that would make life so much easier for them. You know, yeah. they've got the articulating waist belts. They've got the articulating knee joints. They have everything that's kind of an exoskeleton built in that helps them do their job better. Yeah. You get so, to... as we go forward in space exploration, and we're going to land on the moon again, 
Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to be like John F. Kennedy here, but, you know, we will end on the moon in this are. next decade. Um, I could guarantee it. Um, you know, Artemis yeah. three. hello. Um, That's going to happen. But, you know, the thing is, is that stuff that we see coming, it's on our horizon. It's already built. And the thing is, that's another thing of where it shows that, spe that you know, something that some dude came up in his garage to help people who are injured, you know, mm -hmm. kind of spiraled into, you know, getting involved in aerospace. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to see, man. Yeah, like it's, it's, there's a, there's a lot that goes into that. I think it's, it's crazy because you think about aerospace and, and it comes full circle because in the ergonomics in like you, you think about the space station mm -hmm. um this is not zero gravity just very low gravity if you were zero gravity you'd be floating off into space but yeah. uh, it's w what's happening is like if they're running on a treadmill they gotta be held down yeah you, you start dealing with muscle atrophy because yeah. you're not using it any so it's it goes even past where it's like you need to start using your muscles a little bit now. It's like maybe maybe less assistance. Right. But but during the suit, like while you're out in hazardous terrain, maybe there's a sandstorm or something. Uh, let's say in the distant future when we land on Mars, something happens and you yep. need that. Yeah, it's gonna help you. I mean, it's it's something that it's at that point it's not ergonomics to make it efficient. It's ergonomics for survival. Right. <laughs> so it's it's and it's yeah. like the thing is, it's like if you think about it. The um, uh, crew capsule, um, um, crew dragon, you know, part of SpaceX's fleet of, um, uh, you know, I guess you could say spacefaring aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, they have the um, 3D, they, not 3D printed, they have the formed seats in them. So, you know, if we remember Inspiration 4 and those couple of missions that we had just recently. They're getting ready to fire another one. It's hundred percent civilian flight here in the next, you know, I think a couple weeks. Um, but the thing is, and that's the only time really we we run four people. Usually it's three or someone like that lately. Um, but the thing is, is all crew dragon capsules have seats that are formed to the individual, so they sit right inside of them with all the gear on, hundred yeah. percent comfortable. And you hear some of the interviews from the people, and they said these things feel great. You know, because they're comfortable. They're formed to them. They're ergonomic for how they sit. <laughs> they're not metal like they used to be. <laughs> right. If you look at the, now, the funny thing is you look at the Artemis capsule, it's completely polar opposite. Yeah. You know, it, it's back to, you know, the, the suspension seats that we had in Apollo. I think they're just carryovers at this point. You know, somebody <laughs> found on the back of a shop someplace and said, eh, they'll work. You know? Yeah. And, <laughs> They're like, you gonna use that? <laughs> you only use it the first couple seconds of lift off, and other than that, you ain't gonna worry about it no more. You know, <laughs> yeah. really, the only time you're in your seat is you know for launch and landing. You know, it's pretty much keep your hand inside the ride at all times. Yeah, <laughs> please I remain mean, seated <laughs> while the aircraft is in like, motion. If you would like to keep any of your limbs, you keep them in here. If you know, you it's like the monorail at Disney. Yeah. Um, but you know, we warned you. <laughs> right, we, we gave you fair warning. But the thing is, is they don't, those aren't very ergonomic, but then again, that's, that's the government for you trying to save a dime. Um, however, there is rumors that could change later for long duration space flights. Yeah. And, you know, the stuff with like the HLS, you know, the, the lander system, they're going to have ergonomic mm. um, built, ergonomics built in because it's taking our astronauts from a rendezvous location yeah. down to the moon and back again yeah it's got to be able to I back mean, up to gateway it's got to be at least you know manageable it right. can't, like especially in the situation like where they're going in i know that this the astronauts are tested mentally physically uh emotionally um they they sit out in a damn pod for two weeks just completely removed from the world, mm -hmm. no family, nothing. Maybe once a day you talk to you can talk to family, but that's it. But they do that on purpose because stress. Yeah. And and if they're not comfortable in that situation and they feel stressed, it's it's easier to I don't want to say lose your mind because they're very hardened um, you know, people they've they've mm -hmm. kind of put their put their mind and body to the test to get there. But you don't want to make it easier to, to, to slip off of, you know, focus. Right. So at the end of the day, 
the ergonomics and the comfortability. That's why they put the the, the tablets in the mm -hmm. in the on the thigh or the the hamstring there. Yeah. Easier accessibility. We were never able to get a computer that str uh, small before, so we were never able to do that in other spacesuits. But right. like they get all their information right there. They got a computer strapped to them. It's 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 actually. Uh, quite advanced compared to how much smaller it's gotten mm -hmm. comparatively. Um, but yeah, I went to you know the spacesuits back in um, at uh, in, in Florida by at the space uh, museum down there. Yeah, and uh, they look like uh, the old old like diving suits. Yeah, like the ones we used on Mercury that were just aluminum foil and a helmet that said "Here, good luck." And I was and and they got to be in space. Yeah, and I mm, that's. And these were the same guys that was like, Too open close. the door and take a walk. And you're like, what? Too close. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah just get some air outside. No. That's, yeah, that's it'll be a fine. vacuum. You'll, you will not breathe. <laughs> but if you think about it, you know, we started getting into the, and those weren't ergonomic. If you walk, look down, they were flying tin can. Um, yeah, they, they, literally. Um, but then you got guys who, you know, the times, like, Ar I think it's Artemis 10, uh, 2030, 2029, somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 180 days long or longer duration space flight. You have to be comfortable yeah. during that. And yes, we're kind of going off on the space tangent, but the thing is, is that's, kind of that's where ergonomics really comes in handy. You know, cool, you do this or that, I get it. However, you're stuck on a you know distant planet, you're going to be comfortable. Is it like, like it you know, now you got some of the guys who, like for example, like the, the miners, you know, you have, if you ever look at yeah. some of their equipment, they're like laying down, almost laying down on their backs. Mm -hmm. Ergonomics. Because if not, you're going to be screwed. You're bouncing head across the ceiling. Yeah. You know, some things are a necessity. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, it goes into how it works, too. Some, seems, some things are a necessity because of the physics of it. Right. It has to work that way. Otherwise, number one, you don't make it. And number two, it's not, the, the mission's not successful. So, like, that's yeah. complete fail. So, I, I mean, space is, space is the forefront of, um, I mean, we call it, it's the final frontier for a reason. Yeah. Like, it's, um... It's crazy, but it's it's so vast that um, it's it's gonna it's gonna be like very very explored in the near area soon. Mm -hmm. Like I'm thinking up to you know asteroid belt very very quickly at where we're sending to get resources and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, they're mining actual asteroids and things. So um, so you're thinking more like Armageddon. Yeah, I mean Armageddon. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not saying that we're sending the miners in to, to, to explode the asteroid into two and get it to that. I don't know how well that'll work. I mean, the warhead is not gonna. Yeah, I don't know how that, that's gonna. It's not gonna work like that. They ignored a lot of physics in that movie, um, namely when they jumped the big ravine. That's not how gra they would have just floated off into space. They would have just been off the asteroid. <laughs> it's like what? There's a bunch of other space movies that just don't make sense. Yeah, it's like, hey, that's not. How physics works. All right. Yeah. You've got nothing pulling you back down. You're just going to float away. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah. We, we, we got all <laughs> that tangent. All got a little too. off that. But, no, but, but that's where I see kind of space. We may have to do a series on that. In yeah. movies where physics and, and, and technology just don't add up. Yeah, no, it's it's. I'm sure we can have an entire episode, entire series on that rant. There's years of content. <laughs> it's years. It's mo most of the time, though, a lot of the time. Science is based on some science fiction, and they said I can make it work with actual physics. But yeah, that'd be cool to go through. Um, but yeah, no, it's space is space is the the you know the final frontier is where we want to mm -hmm. explore. I mean, humans want to you know they want to explore, they want to reach around and and see what what else is close by, and you know what they can uh, learn from it and things like mm -hmm. that. So I, I think that um, having ergonomics and realizing the length and duration of some of those trips. Um, it, it's, you know, required for it to be successful. Right. You know, and if, you know, small little fun fact, if you think about the name of the company that we have, Volcanar Technology Solutions, some of that is space related if you think about it. Yeah. You know, or Star Trek, depending on if you're a Trek or not. Mm -hmm. But so if you look at the Vulcan, the, the, the Vulcan Centaur from, you know, ULA, yeah. you know, it's based off of a lot of uh, Star Trek, you know. And, but um, that's you know, there. It's <laughs> another you know caps. We don't know if those are going to fly again. It's going to be the this be the Boeing Starliner. Hopefully, I think it's off the ground soon. Um, yeah, hopefully, it's supposed to be soon. I'm going to say I I hope all launches go well. And <laughs> this one is going to be different because it's going to be landing in the middle of Nevada test range. Yeah, you know, kind of weird when you're when you're pulling the whole you know Russian landing sequence. Yeah, um, but 
you know, the thing is, is Blue Origin been doing it a while now, so I guess if they're part, of, you know, part of this, you know, Boeing catastrophe, they should be fine. Um, <laughs> you know, they figured it out so far. Um, yeah, getting beat by SpaceX, though. Right, but if you think about it, you start getting into the like the the um, suborbital flights that yeah. Blue Origin flies. You know, all their flyers are on their back, kind of comfortable. No, no helmets needed. No, nothing needed. You're right there next to the big window, so you can see the Earth go by. You know, at least you can see the Carmen line. Yeah. You know, and so you're comfortable the entire time. The only thing is, you don't have a lot of room to, to fill around. There's a big orb in the middle. You know, that's for their jettison motor in case something goes horribly wrong. But you know, the thing is, is everybody's comfortable. Yeah. Everybody's there. That's the thing is like you get to like enjoy the moment, enjoy the, your surroundings, yeah. and and you don't have to think about oh I need to adjust my seat. You're, they probably have accounted for oh, yeah. you and specifically your body sitting in that seat, and and um, you know all of the things strapping you down, like all everything holding you there has had you in mind. They've got to make it. Yeah, and the right. thing is that now you know funny part is you start talking about that and you start going into. You know, the advanced ergonomics in, in like, regular airline flight. <clears throat> Y'all, seats in the airlines are not made for everybody. No. Uh, for some certain reason, they get smaller over the years. Maybe y'all should make them a little bigger. Um, you know, if you have to sit on both armrests, you're, the seats have gotten too small. Right? No. It's like, I'm not that big a dude. But sometimes you kind of, you know, feel a little bit of it. You're like, okay, well, this is interesting. I just think that they're, they're small even for an, an average, nor, yeah, average human person. being. Yeah. You know, but the thing is, is you start getting like the guys who are flying, you know, when we fly for work, you're flying business class. You know, that's where ergonomics takes the cake because you got, you know, lay flat seats and stuff like that. And, well, they really, you know, put out all the stops for it. You know? But the thing is, is, you know, I watched, I was watching something the other day. They did an entire convention on the future of air travel and they have seats where they're stacked on top of you, they're like pods where people fly laying down. Or fly stacked up on top of each other like they were going into a movie. Mm, get that from Tokyo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but seriously, it's it's that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, I I'd have to I'd I'd have questions about the um, structural integrity. Well, yeah, structural integrity. Actually, I think I, it, it more it'd be like a like um, um, a beehive. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be fine, but when you think about crashing. How is that person going? What are you strapping yourself down onto a bed? Mm. Well, usually if it's well, th never mind. I'll digress on that one. Um, you know, I mean, you, you you make a good point. A, 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 good, a good airplane landing is yeah. when we can reuse the airplane after that. Yeah, you or a great one is when you can reuse a plane after that. A good one is when well, you get there. Nobody's dead. No. Right. <laughs> you know, a bad landing is you can't use that plane again. Yeah. You know, and you might have some injuries. Some bad news. Yeah. Right. But the thing is, if you think about it, now we build, you know, Qatari Airways. Um, those guys. I'm telling you one thing. I've watched videos on them. I want to fly them so bad. Mm -hmm. Because Qatari Airways, because, they, you know, they are some of the best airplanes in the sky. Those, those A380s. You get a first class where you can get a freaking shower on board an airplane. That's, yeah, I think I remember seeing <coughs> those come out. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like that's something that you know, I've never flown an A380 yet. You know, it's I, that's something that's one of those. I've flown on the Queen of the Skies, 747s, love them. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the A380 is one of those where it's like, this thing shouldn't get off the ground, for one. Um, it's like a beluga whale. It should not fly. <laughs> but it's probably the most ergonomic airplane you've ever seen. Yeah. For the amount of people you're shoving on board. You know, and it's kind of, you know, that way. You know, if you think about it, also car manufacturers, they got to think about ergonomics all the time, and they have to use sensors to figure that part out. Yeah, you know seats and whatnot of how you're setting those up. Yeah, and and you and that's like also prototyping and, and rapidly having to do so because you can't sell hundreds of thousands of cars and then be and not be comfortable, right? And mm -hmm. and not have some sort of way to fit. You know, they 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 have it on the the commercials, towing capacity, like it's seats, you know, carrying capacity, seats this many people, like th those things are important because. You can, you're yeah. going to want to use all of the, the, the product you buy. But no one ever talks about leg room height and stuff like that. But 
you know, maybe they should start talking about butt room. I'm going to be honest. I think it's less important for yeah, room. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> Me, it's like getting into the freaking, and, and, you know, <laughs> and, into a Mini Cooper. I should, yeah. no, that stuff don't work. Yeah. But, the, you know, the thing is, is maybe they start incorporating, I don't know, butt room. You know? If, you, if you're seeing, if, if you're freaking, you know, inseam is this long, you ain't going to fit. <laughs> they're like yeah which, they're just like hey what's your waist size yeah you're gonna like put it on the label tire like next to the tire, tire label you know funny. maybe a little tight you know oh. but you know that's here it's like there. good but, no good try again yeah you may be too tall for this vehicle you know it's like you may be this tall to ride this ride you may be too tall for this you know it's that's also the other thing you start getting to like ride technology yeah that's a whole other bag of animals I mean, and it's just making everything more efficient. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's like crazy. The new, well, the Neutron ride. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. What's that? The Neutron ride at Epcot, all mm -hmm. right, uh, or Disney, um, is based off the movie Tron, okay. and they have the Tron coaster. Okay. So, you actually sit in what looks like a Tron bike. Okay. If you can't physically sit in that bike, they have uh, benches in the back for you to sit on to be able to still enjoy the uh, ride. Yeah, I, this is cool. It's it puts cool. you in an ergonomic position for you to be able to enjoy that ride. Like you're riding a motorcycle. Right. See, and that's that's part of, like, we, we didn't even say anything about it, but augmented reality. We, we said AI, you know, artificial intelligence. Yeah. And, you know, um, you think augmented reality or uh, artificial reality, whatever you want to call it, like, it's it's something where... Uh, they can even use some 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 visuals to mm -hmm. add to this, and they probably do. I mean, I've only seen pictures of this, but that's crazy. I've worked with with speaking of that, I've worked with companies. That's um, got to be pretty new too. Uh, company Hollow Klein. Yeah. Okay, Hollow Klein. I've worked with them in the past. Great group of guys. Absolutely great. You when you put the headset on, yeah. Um, you wear it. You can when you you can do what's called um uh, box ergonomics. So you can take one of boxes and build your stations out and test it before you even build the station itself to make sure the ergonomics makes sense. Yeah, I like that too. Right. But, and the thing is that sometimes, you know, they have it set up where it also gives you an ergonomic score. You know, does this make sense? It'll give you right. a score that tells you, okay, is this acceptable or not acceptable? Is you it know? within threshold? Hollow Klein is, you know, a great piece of software. Um, it takes a lot, of, a lot of processing power, but it's a great piece of kit, you know, for all the, you know, engineers out there that um, are definitely, you know, getting into this, you know, field of work. Um, highly recommend it. Um, they're out of Germany. Um, so, and they'll definitely be able to, you know, at least hook you up a little bit. But, you know, that's not here nor there. <laughs> definitely not an ad for them, but it's just a company I've worked with. And that's what they specialize in. They specialize in that kind of stuff. Because that's also what you start getting into is um, paper boxing. You know, paper box of stations out. Get to where you can build it. You know, and then it's kind of like pre-build. Yeah, you're you're like helping out. You're you're helping and planning uh, stations, right? Right. Like it's 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 one thing to plan out the ergonomics, but if you don't know what you're even doing, yeah, that's a different story. Then yeah, you're not going to get to the ergonomics. <laughs> right, and hopefully, you know, one comes with the other. You yeah. know, yeah, not always, but most of the time. Um, but you know, we've seen it where it goes two different directions. Um, so, and it, that does that in some magnificent fashions. Um, but, you know, the future of ergonomics, I think, is, is, is on the horizon, if it's not already here. I, I think we're, we're on the cusp of Yeah. It. I think seeing yeah. the, um, exoskeletons, the assisted seating stuff, you know, out there now, it's available to the normal human. You know, it's like gloves that help people that have arthritis pick things up. You know, and that type of stuff, assistant, assistant technology, you know, is, is one of those things of where, you know, it keeps everything ergo, however it makes sense. And we're seeing that come more and more and more to the forefront. <clears throat> you know, I've seen, you know, um, you know, stuff on DARPA, on DARPA's website where they talk about testing this type of stuff, but it's not ready yet. You know, the, the soldier of fortune that's coming, you know, or that that's what they want, you know, soldier of the future, you know, with all the extra built-in technology on top of an exoskeleton piece is not here yet you know it's it, it's not it's at least what they what they publish on the main interwebs it's not here yet um and that's what i'm going to believe because that's all i have access to um so you know it is it's coming they're definitely in development of some yeah. sort 
But the fact that it's made it to the regular consumer first and support of the regular consumer, our wounded warriors, you know, the people who need it the most. Yeah. You know, you know, mom and pop shops who, you know, kind of, they don't, you know, they, they're staying in business to stay alive. You know, that's the type of stuff that, you know, I look forward to. And I think we're on the cusp of it. I think we've already started it. Yeah. And now it's just getting better. And. Just making it easier. Right. And that kind of leads us to the manufacturing, you know, side of the house where it comes to the manufacturing, this type of stuff. You know, you start talking about using metal 3D printers, extrusion machines to build these things. Mm-hmm. You know, to build these exoskeletons, make them loose, make them tight, make them out of titanium, make them lightweight and rigid. Mm-hmm. Fix any broken pieces that you have. Like, right. Like you said, the honeycomb stuff. Upkeep. Yeah. You, 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 and, and then you can play with even infills to make it more rigid or more durable. Mm-hmm. It's it's something that's going to help you with sustainability. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it just it's just to and continue the like ever growing you know or ever you know learning industry that is yeah. production and you know it's always how how can we make more how can we do more to keep feeding that beast if you don't use ergonomics you're gonna fall behind yeah and you know the thing is is powder bed fusion will get you there yeah it'll make, it'll it'll help you build the parts because it'll help you having to go tool your own right yeah. Either that, or you know, you know, come up, find a solution that works. You know, figure out what type of data you need, play with it, see where you go, and you know, come to come to a forefront on it. You know, but I I think we've kind of kicked this this horse down this this uh, you know yeah. this can down the street a little bit. Um. So you know, I just want to say thank you. You know, we've brought you to the end of this. You know, into this series. And I, next week, we're going to start a brand new series again. So we're going to kind of keep doing these series things. And we're going to start getting into um, construction and agriculture equipment. Like the technology behind Con Ag. You know, so, you know, stay tuned for that. You know, definitely be touching on some of your favorite, you know, companies out there. You know, uh, John Deere and all of them. Yeah. So, and also, I'm not going to, I don't really want to get too far into the um, right to repair laws. But we may... Uh, work our way through that process because we know John Deere is one of them. Um, so, but I digress. But you know, stay tuned for that. You know, have some fun. Um, I want to say thank you. You know, I looked at the numbers the other day. We have worked 1,500 people that's 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 that's, that's listening to us. And I'm going to tell you something, California. You are bringing it strong. I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you that right now. Y'all are owning it out there. Um, so and I've you know been to that state. Some state, some parts of that, some parts of that that, that, that state, I, I like more than others. Um, but the thing is, the food's good. You know, people seem to be, you know, be good people. And you know, hopefully, we support what you're looking for. If you have any questions, ask. Um, same thing to everybody else. You know, I just want to call it the ones who are freaking, you know, hitting it big. You know, you're talking 200 some odd listens in one month. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, kind of out there, right? It's nice. Yeah, appreciate it. And you know, the thing is, is you know, we get some from everywhere else. I'll tell you one thing: we see some of the most interesting places in the world pop up on our maps when this that you've listened to us. And some of those places we cannot wait to go to. It'd be pretty cool. You know, maybe we can go out there and do a do a live, you know, with some of y'all. You know, but that's something that y'all want to do, you know, later on down the road. But you know, that's something that we could do. So I just want to say thank you for me. Um, I really do appreciate it. You know, stay tuned to next week. You know, have a little bit of fun. So I'm going to turn it over to John. So y'all have a good night. Hey, guys. Um, also, Echo, and I say it every time, like, always appreciative. You know, we, we, we love the people that listen. And if you've gotten this far, it's, you know, you're that person. You, we appreciate you, right? You specifically. So um, with that being said, yeah, definitely you should stay tuned. We have... Um, quite a few ideas cooking quite a few things that we would like to kind of do as well as we've got that convention coming up tct rapid tct and in, mm-hmm. in, in the beginning of may so that's something that's going to be pretty exciting for us to go to to see kind of the industry um on on that side and, and that's something that you know we would be interested in kind of bringing to you guys or uh showing you guys as well um so um like nick said uh, if you guys want to reach out please do like we we can um you know work with you on projects you know if you've got something that you don't know would work or you want to like plan something out or you have questions even just small maybe you maybe you have one question uh, feel free to email us like, you know where to find us you know where to yep. contact us to so reach out um we got you know a million ideas in our head but 
we would throw those away to try to work on something that you guys are that you guys are interested on. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, stay tuned, guys. Um, and uh, that's all I had. There you go. Y'all get out there and learn something. All right, we'll talk to you later. Thank you for listening to the Tech at Lunch podcast, where we hope you learn something about tech during your break or during your lunchtime. If you did, please give us a follow to prevent missing future episodes. If you have any ideas or something you want to hear or learn about, please send us a show idea to podcast at vulcanora.com. Hope you have a good rest of the day and continue learning.